live from the Triangle, this is WNCN Today. Good morning. Thanks for watching WNCN Today at 11. I'm Paige Crawford. And I'm Phil Sanchez. Lots to get to on this Friday morning. NC State Police looking for a suspect they say sexually assaulted a female student on campus this morning. Investigators say they're searching for this guy right here, a 30-year-old man, about 5 foot 8 inches tall with gold frame glasses. Police say the suspect approached her near Dabney Hall and touched her on the backside and genitals. Police say no weapon was used. If you have any information, call campus police at the number on your screen, 919 515 3000. Police in Durham still looking for a guy they say sexually assaulted a woman in Durham. It happened just before 9 yesterday morning. Cops say the suspect walked into the victim's house where the assault took place. Police do not believe she knew her attacker. And a scary accident in Orange County sends two people to the hospital this morning. A driver headed in the wrong direction on I-40 slammed into a pickup truck. State troopers had to reroute traffic in the westbound lanes for nearly three hours to clear away the wreckage and get the drivers to the hospital. No word yet on their conditions. And more tragic tragedy in South Korea, a subway train crashed into the bank of another at a station in the country's capital, Seoul. An emergency official says 172 people were injured, but none seriously. A Seoul Metro official said a signal failure caused the accident and two subway cars derailed. It was South Korea's second serious transport accident in less than a month following the ferry sinking off the coast on April 16th. 300 people are either dead or still missing from that accident. Back here at home, racial profiling by police officers in Durham was the center of a meeting yesterday. The city's Human Relations Commission has outlined 34 ways city police can improve community engagement, training, and oversight. The report comes after months of public hearings. The city council will now review it. The data indicates the possibility that um, the policies that we have in Durham that have been uh, developed in uh, well-meaning purposes may result in uh, disparities which need to be corrected. No official comment from Durham police, but the department has denied allegations of racial profiling. Meanwhile, the sheriff of Alamance County is fighting a federal lawsuit accusing his department of racial profiling. A court hearing in this case scheduled for July. The U.S. Justice Department filed a civil rights complaint against Sheriff Terry Johnson, saying his deputies cited Hispanic drivers at a rate six times higher than white drivers. At the national level, meanwhile, both the House and Senate have recently introduced bills that would ban racial profiling. An 18-year-old is behind bars, charged with breaking into a Durham police officer's home and stealing a uniform. Police say Christopher Reyna faces a number of charges stemming from Tuesday's burglary. Investigators say most of the police equipment taken has been recovered, but the officer's puppy, seen here, is still missing. Reyna says he gives the dog, or he gave the dog rather, to an unknown family in the Beauty World parking lot on Avondale Drive. Police are asking the family to return that puppy who takes prescribed medication. That family is not facing any charges. And the 28th annual Durham County Peace Officers memorial service is underway right now. Yep, we'll take you live right there. You're looking live at the ceremony at Greystone Baptist Church. Law enforcement and the community are paying tribute to fallen officers across the state. State Trooper Michael Potts is serving as the keynote speaker. He was shot during a traffic stop last year. He returned to work, though, in February. Meanwhile, the U.S. Army also paying tribute to a soldier killed in action last year. A ceremony is underway right now at Fort Bragg to honor Sergeant First Class Ricardo Young. Young was killed trying to save Afghan National Security Forces from ambush. The Army says his actions saved the lives of more than 30 soldiers and eight Afghans. Young's family will be given the Silver Star. Protesters called out Duke Energy for how it's handling a massive coal ash spill. Our children get sicker, their pockets get bigger. Dozens of people marched outside the company's annual shareholders meeting in Charlotte yesterday. Some investors wanted Duke to vote out at least four of its board members. State Treasurer Janet Cowell used the state's nearly 400,000 shares in Duke stock to vote against a Duke director. But in the end, none of the members was voted out. Since the stock has underperformed, uh, we would like to see Duke uh, take some aggressive action, uh, solve this issue and again, make money for uh, themselves and the shareholders, and that'll be good for both Duke and the state of North Carolina. There was also a push for Duke Energy to release all of its political spending, but the majority of shareholders voted that down as well. We've covered the coal ash crisis extensively over the past few months. You can find all of the stories as well as an interactive map of the coal ash plants in our state right now on WNCN.com. Just click on the Investigates tab. We'll take a turn now. Workers took their push to raise the minimum wage to downtown Raleigh. We want justice for our workers. 
The demonstration coincided with May Day rallies around the world. Immigrants' rights groups also took part, hoping for legalization and the end uh, of threat of deportation. Others want better pay, calling for a minimum wage hike to 15 bucks an hour. I've been employed at Taco Bell on and off for four years now, and I'm still at minimum wage, and that's not enough to care for my son. Those same groups are also pushing for an end to arrest at Moral Monday protests, which pick back up next month. Meanwhile, a May Day rally turned violent in Seattle. Dozens of protesters wearing masks started throwing things at cops. The incidents happened after thousands of people took part in a march in downtown. More fallout this morning in the Donald Sterling scandal. The head of the Los Angeles chapter of the NAACP has resigned over criticism of the group's plan to give the controversial Clippers owner a Lifetime Achievement Award. NAACP President Leon Jenkin this week announced the NAACP rescinding the award and returning previous Sterling donations. Jenkins' resignation today from the, quote, negative exposure. And two people face charges this morning in the murder of a North Carolina A&T football player. Greensboro police say Kendrick Robinson and Lamaya Sanders Jr. killed 22-year-old Jermaine Clark. Clark was shot outside his off-campus apartment late Tuesday night. Police say the pair tried to rob Clark in a botched drug deal over $200 worth of marijuana. The National Weather Service now confirming a tornado touchdown in Edgecombe County on Tuesday. An EF0 twister, they say, with winds of up to 80 miles an hour touchdown, ripping roofs off homes and toppling trees onto cars. It's one of three confirmed tornadoes, the others both EF1s in Cumberland and Sampson counties. <laughs> Unbelievable video showing a landslide in Baltimore that took out an entire side of a city block. Heavy mm. rains partly to blame. The downpours moved north, causing flash flooding in New York and Pennsylvania, as well as New Jersey. It's all part of that same system that came through North Carolina. Yeah, you see something like that and how lucky those folks were they were in the cars. But, you know, you look at the roadway and you always think when you're driving in a car how, how strong that is. And then when you see how little part is asphalt and the rest is the earth, the earth wins every time. Hey, today we're trying to win on the cloud sun battle. We started out with sun, but the clouds are winning right now. A little low pressure off of the Florida where they can't seem to catch a break with the rain. We'll drag some clouds our way. I think the precipitation is going to stay along the coast. With that being said, we're showing some echoes, and we'll look at the radar in a moment. But it's mostly cloudy now after some sun this morning, 63 in Raleigh, 67 in Fayetteville, 66 in Rocky Mount. As we look at the Doppler radar, the air is dry. This stuff is not really reaching the ground, and if it does, it'll be very fine quick sprinkle. So maybe Moore County, Harnett County, uh, Wayne County, maybe a brief sprinkle. We're not going to see anything uh, reach the ground in the triangle or so. So we could just see a brief sprinkle, too light, uh, too uh, slight of a chance to even worry about in the forecast. You don't need any rain gear today. So let's go mainly cloudy at noon, cooler today. A little bit of sun mixes in later today, but the high is going to be 70. Wait till you see the weekend forecast. It's going to be sweet. So we'll have that coming up for you. All right, thank you, Bill. New changes at the DMV could mean shorter wait times there. Right now, people who move into the state won't have to take a written test before they can get a North Carolina license. But in a few months from now, you will be able to renew your license online every other cycle. You'll also be able to pay with credit or debit cards by 2015, and DMV kiosks will be available in local grocery stores and shopping malls. That's good news. Mm -hmm. Art can bring on many emotions for the viewer, but most of all, for the artist. You've heard of music therapy probably. Well, up next, we're going to introduce you to art therapy for those with substance abuse problems. And coming up in health, a new study makes the connection between bone loss and asthma. All that and more right here on WNCN. Stick with us. We're coming right back.
live from the Triangle, this is WNCN Today. Welcome back. Along with new technology brings new hope. Yeah, and that means new movement for a Rocky Mountain man paralyzed on the football field. This is a good story. Colt Brake injured his spine during a tackle four years ago. Thanks to new technology at Wake Med, Colt can now move his arms and touch his face. It's a big hurdle for someone who's paralyzed. Colt can now build muscle and make movements most people take for granted. Well, now, you know, lean my body over. I've actually gotten more power in my midriff being able to sit up. Man, good for him. Colt's mm. goal one day, he says, is to wheel his own wheelchair and maybe even drive a hand-operated car. Good for him. Well, Toronto Mayor Rob Ford says he's taking a leave of absence to seek help for alcohol abuse. The announcement came following allegations that there's another video showing the mayor smoking crack. Ford is also under fire after an audio recording surfaced where he made lewd comments about the woman who's running against him in the next election. Ford's mother says she's glad her son is getting help. I had no idea it was as serious as it was. But he doesn't live with me. So I don't know what he does every minute of every day. There is no word yet on how long Ford will be out. And substance abuse, of course, a problem for many people around the world and right here in our state. No doubt about that. There are a number of treatments available, and one of them is art therapy. Justin Quisenberry reports. The syringes are just showing some of the equipment, per se, that people would use. Such a dark piece of art may be surprising coming from someone whose own portrait would seemingly be bright and full of life. I consider myself a recovering addict. Alexandra Causey says she was introduced to pills in college. And it really kind of blossomed into this monster. She battled five years of addiction and is now more than three years clean. Her road to recovery included traditional therapy. Where you all sit around and talk about your feelings. That may have been too abstract for her taste, but art therapy brought her feelings to the foreground. In Raleigh, Justin Quisenberry, WNCN News. Yeah, coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, hear how and why some people say art therapy works so well for them. In other health news today, a new study suggests you can't fix skull deformations in babies with a helmet. About one in five infants develop a flattened skull from lying in the same position for long periods. But researchers found babies who wore a helmet for 23 hours a day for six months had no more improvement in skull shape than babies who did not wear the helmets. Experts say the helmets, which are expensive and bothersome to babies, should no longer be standard treatment for skull deformities. And another study shows asthma may be linked to bone loss. Data from more than 7,000 people showed lower bone density among patients with airway problems. Prior research has shown the steroids used to treat breathing conditions can affect bone health, but experts say it appears asthma itself is also a factor. North Carolina near the top when it comes to enrolling for Obamacare. Nearly 360,000 people signed up for insurance under the Affordable Care Act. That's nearly double the projections. Only California, Florida, Texas, New York enrolled more people. Of those who signed up in North Carolina, more than 90% bought their coverage with a subsidy. New proof that the U.S. economy is on the rebound. Nearly 300,000 jobs were added by employers last month. As Tracy Potts reports, unemployment has now dropped to some of the lowest levels we've seen in four years. It's a blowout. 288,000 new jobs in April, a lot more than economists predicted. Plus, 36,000 more jobs not counted in February and March. Plus, the number of people who've been jobless for six months or more, that dropped significantly. The unemployment rate is now down to 6.3 percent. But I think we're going to find out momentum is pretty good here in the second quarter. Layoffs have slowed down, but employers are also slow about creating new jobs. Companies are, are being very, very choosy in their hiring process, and, and uh, they're only selectively expanding. Thank you. 344,000 new people applied for unemployment checks in the last week, the most since late February. In Washington, the Senate Excellent agreed advice. to extend emergency no, unemployment benefits. Now, the House has to act. It's paid for, it's responsible, it addresses the issue, it's workable. People are buying more. March saw the fastest consumer spending increase in four and a half years. Automakers had their best April in almost a decade. People also spent money on utility bills and health care. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington.
And things are on track to get even better. Analysts say the unemployment rate will continue to drop beyond this year, possibly as low as 5.5 percent by the end of 2015. All right. To a consumer alert now, Microsoft is out with a fix to a serious bug found in Internet Explorer. Customers who have automatic updates won't need to take any action. For those who don't get updates, you're urged to get a security patch, though. A cybersecurity company announced they found the breach earlier this week. It did impact versions 6 through 11. So that nasty weather system that caused so many problems here in our state this week is creating headaches in the Northeast. Heavy rain triggered a nasty mudslide on Long Island in New York, burying at least two cars and affecting some homes in New Jersey. A lot of flooding there. Some people were forced to use boats to get around when rising waters turned streets into streams. This drone video shows just how bad the historic flooding is in the Florida Panhandle. Pensacola received more than 20 inches of rain in 36 hours. The storm washed out roads and damaged buildings. Two people drowned after getting stuck in their cars. Mm. They're getting more rain down there, too. Are they really? Not, not exactly in that area, but just more in Florida where they've Man. had enough rain. Yeah, that's and awful. And then if, what would be a miracle? You want to be a billionaire? You want to rule the world? Figure out how to get that rain and put it over out west where they're where in they the drought. Dry. Right. You know I mean? It's too much, too little. Boy, if we could somehow figure out a way to do that, it would be... Like I said, you'd be king of the world yeah. if you do that. Hey, we're looking for a nice weekend coming up. And here's your neighborhood network. This is the time lapse. We started out with some sunshine, and as we'll put it in motion. You're going to see some of the clouds that I was forecasting finally getting in here. You know, I got a call this morning. Well, my wife called me this morning and said, you said it was going to be somewhat cloudy, and it's completely sunny. Well, there you go. We've got some clouds right now. And I uh, hate to say I told you so, but you never say that to your wife, right? Yeah. Uh, 63 degrees at WNCN TV studios in Raleigh. East Chapel Hill High, 63. Person County Airport, 61. Fayetteville Airport in Fayetteville, 67 degrees. No precipitation. And as we look at the rays of sunshine then, we had a lot this morning, but uh, I've toned it down just a little for the afternoon. Three. A th a three, uh, and that is mostly cloudy skies. I don't have my arrows there. I guess I got rid of them. Hey, the radar is showing some echoes, but this stuff has really not been reported to reach the ground. If it does, it'd be a very fine sprinkle, really brief. Not enough to put a percentage or worry about of any kind of rain gear, but it's just a little wave of moisture uh, that's moving along, a little line. Uh, that'll continue to move toward the east. So maybe a sprinkle from Sanford to Smithfield to Goldsboro, maybe, but probably not. I don't really don't think I'm too concerned about that. As a matter of fact, when we look at the future cast, you're not going to see any precipitation showing up. So if I saw something here, I would maybe want to hesitate and put a shower in the forecast, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to tell you that even though there are echoes aloft, that stuff is evaporating before it reaches the ground. And if it does reach the ground, it'll be a sprinkle. Look at this. Later in the afternoon, as we go hour by hour, 6 o'clock, we'll be partly cloudy. And we'll have a mixture of clouds, uh, variably cloudy skies tonight. A little trough of low pressure is going to move through. Temperatures holding in the 60s, though, if you're going to be out through 10 o'clock tonight. So medium high Friday and Saturday, medium on Sunday, medium high on Monday as we look at the allergy forecast. That's back up there after being very low from this past week, pretty much because of all the storms we had. If you're headed to the beaches, there will be a couple showers. Some of that stuff will reach the ground and along the beach if you're going to travel there this afternoon. And there could be a shower early tomorrow morning, and then it's going to clear out and be nice on Sunday, 77 degrees, but pretty nice tomorrow afternoon at the beach, too. It's going to be nice both Saturday and Sunday in the mountains. Look for mostly sunny skies, 60s on Saturday, 70s on Sunday. So we've had some of those clouds streaking by, but no rain. That's going to be confined to the coast. It's just low bringing the clouds. Then this trough of low pressure could bring a couple uh, clouds overnight tonight, and then this high gets in here and carves out some mostly sunny skies tomorrow afternoon. This front is caught up as a stationary front back to the west, so it is going to move due east and not come our way. So expect a nice day, and Sunday's going to be sunny. A beautiful day there with, once again, the front staying to the north and more of the same on Monday. All this front will get closer to us by Monday night and Tuesday we might see a shower. I've got that in the forecast. So some clouds staying mostly cloudy in the sand hills and won't rule out a sprinkle. And same story, southern coastal plain, Smithfield southward. Otherwise, clouds cooler, 71 in Roanoke Rapids, 71 in Wilson. And some clouds, but maybe a little more sun works its way back in like it did earlier today, later in the afternoon. 70 Durham, 70 Raleigh, 71 in Henderson. So your forecast, clouds, a little bit of sun, but mostly cloudy this afternoon, 70. Eh, mostly cloudy, variably cloudy tonight, 50. Tomorrow, partly sunny, becoming mostly sunny, 74. Beautiful on Sunday and Monday, 78. And then dot, 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 meaning Monday night into Tuesday, maybe a shower, 79. But behind that front, it's not really going to come through as a cold front. It's going to be warmer, 80 on Wednesday, 83 on Thursday. Hello, May. Mm -hmm. yes. Not bad at all. Very nice, Bill. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, we told you earlier that a memorial service was taking place right now for Great fallen officers. Trooper Michael Potts speaking now. We'll take you there live.
And uh, I've just recently returned back to work after 14 months. And uh, I'm extremely proud to be back as a member of the North Carolina Highway Patrol and serving in a different purpose now uh, because of the issues that I do deal with because of my shooting. Uh, Things are going All right, very there you well go. Trooper me. Potts, as you very well know, he was shot in the face uh, about a year ago, went back to work in February on the podium now. Much more from him coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Meanwhile, looking ahead, more than 3,000 runners are expected to pound the pavement this weekend around Fayetteville. The All-American Marathon takes place Sunday. There will be a full marathon, half marathon at 5K right now. Signs are up. Warning drivers about road closures. You can get a full list of those closures right now on our website, WNCN.com. And on Saturday, Hall & Oates will take the stage at Walnut Creek Amphitheater for this year's Band Together concert. The event will also feature a silent auction, guitar raffles, and artist village, and more. Ticket sales from the event go to the charity Communities and Schools of Wake and Durham Counties. Doors open at 6. You can read much more about the event on our website, WNCN.com. Meanwhile, a big honor for a high school athlete who excels at not just one, but two sports in North Carolina. And it's a big weekend for sports across the country. Up next, we look ahead at the 140th Kentucky Derby and a marathon celebrity comes to visit. We'll be right back. He's a standout on the football field and a champion on the track. Yes, he is. And now Marquavius Johnson is the best high school athlete in our whole state. The Nightdale High School star was named the top male athlete yesterday. Johnson plays four sports at Nightdale, where he's a two-time state champion in the indoor 500-meter race. He's also been part of seven state championship track teams. Johnson plans to continue his run, no pun intended, mm -hmm. on the football field and the track at East Carolina next year. We wish him well. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, it's the biggest day of the year for horse racing when the 140th Kentucky Derby kicks off in Louisville. Yesterday, the horses participated in a few practice rounds. California Chrome is the odds-on favorite to win. Coverage for the Derby kicks off Saturday at 4 o'clock right here on WNCN. And coming up tonight at 6, he made headlines as the first American to win the Boston Marathon in 30 years. Ooh, and this weekend, he'll be in North Carolina to run the first All-American Marathon in Fayetteville. Today, we speak with the champion and we'll bring you his story at 6 o'clock. Very cool. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back in moments.
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Coming up in just a few minutes on My Carolina Today, I am ready for the Kentucky Derby, and I've got a bartender in the house to show us some perfect derby drinks. Also, getting you ready for bikini season, what you need to eat and what you should avoid. In just a few minutes on My Carolina Today. WNCN proudly sponsors Band Together's 2014 main event featuring Rock and Roll Hall of Famers Daryl Hall and John Oates. Walnut Creek Amphitheater, May 3rd. Also featuring special guest Robert Randolph and the Family Band. For ticket info and more, visit WNCN.com. You know, it's for a good cause. Mm -hmm. And the weather's going to be great. Yep. So and the music's going to be great. And if you're thinking of going, you know, I mean, it'd be just great. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be fantastic. Page will be emceeing, by yeah. the way. Well, that makes and Sean Maroney. Yeah. Come, are you going to rub out. shoulders for? No, points? I don't think so. We'll we'll MC and then we'll hit the stage and let the the real let them performers. actually yeah the people people actually <laughs> want to see it out there. But like you said, it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah, night it to watch. is, and we'll show you here the, the forecast. 63 right now, and what we've got for you is a little bit of sprinkle activity. But look at the forecast for the weekend here. 74 tomorrow, great for concerts. Nicely done. We'll White Carolina today is next. Carolina Today, live from the WNCN studios. Hello and welcome to My Carolina Today. I'm Valonda Calloway. Coming up in the show today, the Kentucky Derby airs tomorrow on NBC, and I am getting into the spirit with some derby drinks. And hey, Cinco de Mayo is Monday, so we're celebrating that too. A blues festival this weekend in Raleigh, and Mel Melton is here to perform. Also, Asiago Chicken in the Food Lion Kitchen. And finally, it is not too late to get your body ready to wear a bikini this summer. We'll give you some tips. And speaking of a fit body, the president issued a proclamation naming May National Physical Fitness and Sports Month. In the proclamation, President Obama calls upon the people of the United States to make daily physical activity, sports participation, and good nutrition a priority in their lives. 
Of course, I think a great way to get fit is through dance. So why don't you join me this summer? I'm teaching beginner jazz as well as line dance at North Carolina Dance Institute. Of course, I'll teach the happy line dance and a whole lot more. Check out the website ncdanceinstitute.com to get more details. In Durham, be sure to check out the Bull City Sculpture Show. It's a large-scale public art show presenting 12 sculptures from artists throughout the United States. The opening gala is tonight at 6.30 in Durham Central Park. Tomorrow, beginning at 10, you can watch artists pour molten bronze into molds, producing sculpture right in front of your eyes. In Apex, the Peak Fest begins at 9 a.m. tomorrow. The celebration of the Peak of Good Living means a day of fun, food and fellowship. It's all going down in downtown. Out Raleigh is happening on Fayetteville Street in Raleigh tomorrow. The festival goes from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Be sure to catch WNCN anchor Pam Salsby. She'll be performing at the festival. In addition to music, there's family activities and food trucks. The 34th annual Meet in the Street Festival takes place in Wake Forest Saturday. Enjoy food trucks, live music, children's activities, and arts and crafts. The entire downtown area will be blocked off. It's going on from uh, in the morning to 6 p.m. The actual Kentucky Derby race is over pretty quickly, but the celebrations that surround it go on for hours, so a cool drink is a must. Pasha Morgan from Bartending Unlimited is here, and she'll be here throughout the show with some great options. Nice to have you here. Hi, thank you. So tell me, what's a great drink for Derby Day? Well, Derby Day is um, uh, the day before the actual K uh, Kentucky Derby. So today? So today. And there's a special drink just for that? Absolutely. It's it called? called the Grey Goose Oaks Lily. Oh. Oh, mm -hmm. what's, okay, Grey Goose is in it, vodka. Oh, what yes. else is in it? <laughs> <laughs> and you can make it one of two ways. You can do it virgin mm -hmm. without the alcohol for those, you know, who are not, you know, uh, you know, that drink alcohol. So you're going to make a couple of those. So yes, I'm going to make it some today. Absolutely. So what we're going to do today is we're going to um, get our little Collins glass here. Mm -hmm. And you have one ounce of Grey Goose. Okay. And what else goes in there? Oh, yeah. And then we have sweet and sour mix. Mm -hmm. Got to have some sweet and sour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, refreshing drink. Yeah. And then we're going to do three ounces of cranberry juice. Very nice. And just shake it? Just shake it. Okay. And then we're just going to top that off with a little triple set, which is an orange liqueur. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to check back in with you and, okay. and get my drink in a minute. All right. But right now, I'm going to have a seat and talk to some ladies who are here in honor of Mother's Day, which is just a couple of days away. We're celebrating the occasion by telling you about a great event. It's called Listen to Your Mothers, a movement that's going on nationwide. It's a performance designed to give mothers a voice. Co-producer Marty Long and cast member Rebecca Lanning are here. Ladies, thanks for being here. Thanks for having yes. us. So first of all, how did this get started? Well, um, there was it was born of blogging okay. and a blogger uh, named Ann Imig decided that the stories that were going online connecting all of these um, women across the whole world mm -hmm. online needed to be actually heard. Mm. And so she started a live show and from her live show in her one city it has spread over the past few years to 32 cities nationwide. All right, and Rebecca, you were selected to share your story. Yes, so give us a little sneak peek of the, what you'll be talking about. My story is about my mother, Michael Lanning, who's 75 years old, and for years my two sisters and I begged her to learn to use a computer <laughs> and embrace the digital age, and she gave us a lot of pushback, mm -hmm. a lot of excuses, and we just kept at it, and the story is really more about our frustration and patience with her and, and listening to her. I have the exact same story. <laughs> I must know, did you succeed? That's a mystery to be solved. <laughs> I did not. My mother does text, though. But it cracks me up because sometimes she'll send me a text and there's nothing in it. She'll just hit send. <laughs> and I always laugh, but I'm like, at least she's thinking about me. I don't know what she's thinking, but she's thinking about me. <laughs> good. I'm not there with texting with my mom yet. Okay, so We're you have a charitable it. partner with the show, right? We sure do. Um, proceeds, um, part of the proceeds from the show are going to Safe Child of Wake County. And this is the second year we've partnered with them and love, that the, love the work they do. In Wake County. And when I was reading how you could get in, entered to for a chance to be a part of this, it didn't have to be just women. 
men could participate. Absolutely. Women who don't have any children could mm -hmm. participate. So there's a wide variety of women, men, whoever, who will be sharing stories, right? Yes, yes, we do. We have daughters, we have mothers, we have a story about a grandmother. Um, last year we had a, a man who came and told a beautiful story about his mother and, and the influence she had had over his life. Well, it sounds so exciting, so much fun. Ladies, thanks for coming in to tell Thank us about you. it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Listen to your mother on stage May 6th and May 8th at Keenan Auditorium at William Peace College. After the break, the things you need to do right now to get your body right for summer swimsuits. Three. summer and bathing suit season right around the corner. So to get your abs ready for the season hot, hottest, cut out one pieces and bikinis, we've got to put down certain things and pick up our feet. Health coach and fitness guru Carrie Riggin is here to help us out. So Carrie, first of all, give us some help about shopping in the grocery store. Sure. So general tips, when you're going to the grocery store, stay out of the middle of the store. As you'll see, the processed, the frozen, just the junk food is kind of concentrated in the middle. Mm -hmm. So stick with the peripheral, you know, your veggies, your fruits, your good dairy options, your your meats, you're going to find that on the outside. Okay. Um, since we're right around the corner from summer, you want to cut the sugar all together. Cut the um, the alcohol, the yeah. sugary drinks, the, absolutely no sodas. We take in so many calories by drinking them. We do. People don't realize it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. When it comes to cardio, what should we be doing? So cardio, we really want to up the intensity right now. Okay. Um, it helps you burn more calories even after your workout mm. versus steady state cardio. Obviously, incorporating weight training as well is going to help you tone, sculpt, and burn more calories even at rest. Okay. So if you've been working out but maybe still eating poorly, you've mm -hmm. got some muscles under there. It, you do. <laughs> what, what kind of things can we eat and drink so that we can actually display it and sure. not have it covered up? Sure. So abs are really made in the kitchen. If you are working your butt off in the gym but not eating clean, your efforts are nothing. Mm. Um, so I brought a few of my favorite uh, favorite things that I tend to eat right before a big event or getting into a bikini. Okay. Um, so one of my favorite things is green tea. It has just enough caffeine to fire up fat burning. Mm. Um, so it's going to rev your metabolism and it's going to help you burn more calories. Okay. Can't go wrong with water. Absolutely not. It you know it keeps your energy high, detoxification, metabolism high. It helps hydrates your muscles too. Mm -hmm. So it really helps with your workout. You're going to be able to do more for a longer period of time and obviously that's going to help your fitness results. 
in the long term. And I've read that you should drink water first thing in the morning. Absolutely. So this is a trick I tell all of my clients. Before okay. your coffee, smoothie, whatever your morning routine is, drink an ice cold glass of water with mm. ice. It'll shock your system and really kickstart your metabolism for the day. Very good. What do almonds do for the body? So almonds, these, these have the perfect combination of filling protein, fiber, and healthy fats, including omega-3s. Um, so it's gonna help you feel satisfied, it's gonna keep you full longer, stabilize blood sugar, and prevent cravings, which often leads to you know, overeating and weight mm -hmm. gain. Lots of athletes love eggs. Eggs, this is my favorite source of protein. Again, just like almonds, it has the best combination of healthy fats and protein. So it's gonna lead to feelings of fullness and prevent calories, or and a calories, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Prevent um, cravings. Okay. You know, and of course, seafood. We know that there's some really healthy ones that we should choose. Absolutely. So you want to stick to the fatty fish like mackerel, salmon, mm -hmm. um, tuna. They have high amounts of omega-3s, and this kind of healthy fat helps us burn fat more. And it helps to make our metabolism more efficient, so we're burning more calories and burning more fat. Great tips. And when I go back to my derby drink, I'm just going to sip. I'm not yes. going to drink the whole Enjoy thing. Enjoy it. Everything in moderation. Just a little bit and then go hard yes. today. Okay. <laughs> with the exercise. Thank exactly. you, Carrie. Exactly. Thank when you. When My Caroline Today returns, Asioga Chicken with my little brother Dre in the Food Lion Kitchen. You can find us on several social media platforms. Just search hashtag MyCT. If you're tired of the same old chicken dish and you want to kick it up a notch for dinner, I've got a great recipe for you in the Food Line Kitchen with my little brother, Chef Andre Bruinton. Big brother. Taller, but I'm the oldest and the smartest. More attractive. <laughs> Except I don't know how to cook very well. Very well, because I've learned so much on the show. But you're going to show me an Asiago chicken. Big Asiago chicken dish. Oh, that sounds really nice. It's a healthier option. Oh, so we're gonna bake this in the Indeed. oven. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we start? First of all, we need the chicken breast. Okay. And what are you looking for when you go to Food Lion to get a chicken breast? What makes a good chicken breast? Coloration, mm -hmm. less fat, you know, just, just wanna have just a nice quality product. So that's a nice breast we have there. That one looks good. So we're gonna take that one and we just wanna do the uh, seasoning blend there, salt, pepper, and garlic. All right, we just sprinkle it on. Uh -huh. Do both sides there. We'll turn the chicken over and get uh -huh. the other side? Okay. Yeah, why don't you do that? Thank you. Indeed. I could have just dumped it, huh? Yeah, so well, this better is better with the fingers, more control. Even distribution. Indeed. Okay. okay. All right. Now we have that. Then we want to take Dijon mustard. Oh, nice. Okay, what's the chef way to do we'll this? Just, just zigzag across zigzag. the side. 
It's okay. So we're, going, we're going to spread it out. Okay. Take the spoon there, and we're just going to spread it evenly across. Very nice. This is going to help the breadcrumbs and the uh, asiago stick to it. That makes sense. What's next? Now we need the asiago and the panko. Okay. And we're just going to add panko here. Mm -hmm. Asiago, grated asiago cheese. Okay. Just mix it up. Mix the two together. And we're just going to take it and just evenly sprinkle it across, this, across the top of the chicken. Mm -hmm. And then just taking your basic Pyrex that you have at home mm -hmm. and just lay the breast there. Put it in uh -huh. there. Okay. That simple. All righty. And into the oven we go. Sounds good. So now while the chicken's cooking, we're going to work on some vegetables? Yes, we're going to work on the green beans next. All right, so here's some green beans. Beautiful. I already have my water salted over here. Okay. So add that to it. I don't need the oil. There's the oil. Perfect. Okay. Right there. Cherry tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes, easily found at Food Lion. Absolutely. Okay. Add those in. Red onions. And you just want to just virtually cook these to translucent, meaning just to make them light colored where you can see through them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make it the uh, balsamic. Love that the gives smell. it a nice, and very the, nice smell. And the honey. Honey. Sweeter and then sweeter. Yummy. And that's about has it. So we can reduce the heat on that. Reduce the heat on our green beans as well. Mm -hmm. Pull our chicken out of the oven. Okay. So we'll start beginning plating. All right, here's the hero. Anyway, perfect. We're take our plate. Mm-hmm. Get our green beans. To the water. And we need our chicken breasts. Oh, it looks yummy. And I need a fork. Yes. Ah. Let's sit down here. Take our roach. Right over the top. Oh, yes. This is nice. I get a little bit of everything on my fork. Flavor. I love the vinegar and the honey. Wow, this is really good. Thank you. You're very welcome. And you can find the recipe on our website. We're at mycarolinatoday.com. That was so good. I wish I had it again right now. Well, we are celebrating the Kentucky Derby on NBC. It airs tomorrow and Cinco de Mayo with Pasha Morgan from Bartending Unlimited. And you've made my Cinco de Mayo drink. Yes. And it's so tasty. What's in this? That is two ounces of tequila and grapefruit juice. And it's just a splash of Sprite on top. So Ooh. that one's very light and refreshing. It's one of Mexico's favorite drinks and a smoothest tequila drink. So it's very, very good. And now it's one of my favorite drinks. <laughs> and I'm going to have to stop because I'm drinking it so fast. I'm like, wait a minute, that's still at work. So I'm going to step away <laughs> from the drink. What else do we have over there? <laughs> okay, and, and over here, this is a Grey Goose Lily. Mm -hmm. And that is the official drink of the Oaks. So this one is um, Grey Goose Vodka, cranberry juice, and then just a splash of triple sec on top. And that's a nice, refreshing drink as well. You can do it with the alcohol or without. Mm -hmm. And this is just a great drink. And this also is the beautiful, bright pink color. The, yeah. the proceeds of it actually go to um, a Breast charity, cancer breast charity? cancer okay. and ovarian cancer. So this is a great drink, you know, Pasha, to go thank with. thank you. You're very welcome. Very tasty. I'm going <laughs> to sip very lightly <laughs> as I take my seat. Hello. Hi. 
this weekend. The so is it soda blues? It's so do. So do blues a term, a term and for heritage South festival. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's going on, hosted by the Triangle Blues Society. The festival highlights great blues in the area, and this is Mel Melton. Uh, Good to be here. Yes, and people may know you from your restaurant, Papa Mojo's Papa Roadhouse. Papa Mojo's. They do. Uh, hey, everybody. Hey, so tell us about the festival. Uh, well, it's we're doing it for John D. Holman, a legendary Piedmont blues man. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's he's been around for a long time. He's one of the true last proponents of that style of blues. Okay. And he's 86 years old. He still plays music. I think he still does a little butt dancing every now and then. Mm -hmm. And all the local blues men know him. We love him. We revere him. And we're wanting to help him out and do this as a fundraiser for him. That's so he'll, incredible. He'll be headlining tomorrow. We've got booths set up in front of Papa Mojo's. The whole Greenwood Commons Shopping Center Mall is being roped off. We're going to have about eight or ten bands. We'll have some in the restaurant, some outside on mm -hmm. the stages. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. Food, family, music. What, what more could you need except maybe a couple of those drinks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, to sit very And know, we have a full lightly. bar at the Roadhouse, full so bar. we'll be in good shape. So you are a chef and you play. So yeah. how are you going to balance all this tomorrow? Um, not at the same time, although we do that, <laughs> we do that occasionally. I'm going to play a little music, and then I'll be in the restaurant overseeing the food and having some cooking and cooking up some gumbo and having a good time. This is a great way to introduce people who maybe are familiar with this style of music, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, North Carolina has its own heritage regarding blues, and John Dee's a direct link to the start of it, so couldn't get any better. All right. I love that. So do South Durham. Thank you. I love that. I didn't think it up, but I think it sounds good, too. <laughs> we need it on a T-shirt. We so got do. it. Okay, okay. The So Do Blues and Heritage Festival is tomorrow from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Greenwood Common Shopping Center in Durham. And when we come back, Mel performs one of John D. Holloman's hits, Chapel Hill Boogie. Is that good, or you want to want it more? Huh? I said, go Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill has it all. You hit Chapel Hill, you're gonna have a ball. I said, boogie. I said, boogie. I said, chop a little boogie, boogie, boogie all night long. I said, go ten top, ten top right. You hit ten top, you're gonna. Here now is Mel Melton and the Wicked Mojos performing Chapel Hill Boogie by John D. Holman. Take it away. This one's for you, John. See you tomorrow.
I said, go Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill has it all. You hit Chapel Hill, you're going to have a ball. I said, boogie. I said, boogie. I said, Chapel Hill, boogie, boogie, boogie all night long. I said, go tent top, tent top right. You hit tent top, you're going to fuss and fight. I said, boogie. Come on, boogie. Woo. I said, Chapel Hill, boogie, boogie, boogie all night long. Come on, T.A. Boogie on that guitar for me. I said, Mama, 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 won't you come look at sis out in the backyard doing that Chapel Hill boogie? Yeah, boogie, child. I said, Chapel Hill boogie, boogie, boogie all night long. Well, the rooster and the chicken were laying in the shade. The rooster did the boogie and the hen laid an egg. I said, boogie, come on, boogie now. I said, Chapel Hill, boogie, boogie, boogie all night long. Let's get out of here, T.A. Yeah. Please introduce your guitar player. This is T.A. James. Hey, T.A., that was awesome. Thank you. That was fun. And this was such a beautiful tribute. Yeah, I know. We're all excited, all the musicians and everybody. So. Love it. So Thank you so much for sharing that with Thank us. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. Check out our website. If you missed anything, mycarolinetoday.com.